My name is Stephen Smith. Welcome to my channel. In this video, we are going to review and demonstrate ADP's Accountant Connect Sync with QBO free feature. Specifically, we'll go into the ADP product, the general ledger setup, and review the accounting software setup, accounting mapping, settings, and then show how this to send over the transactions via journal entry. Then we'll go into the QuickBooks Online product, review the matching process, how to reconcile, and then we'll touch upon the journal entries that are actually bringing over the data. Let's get started. Here we are in the general ledger setup section of ADP's Accountant Connect portal. This is primarily for accountants. I got here by going into the payroll and then the general ledger section. You'll see three options in the setup. The accounting software, where you can actually sync to QBO or Xero, among others, which has already been done. The account mapping, which we will review, and then we can talk about some of the settings. Under the account mapping, there are two ways to map, by department or by employee. Department means that if you've got departments set up in ADP, all of your employees belong to a department. And if you set one set of mapping, it will apply to all of the employees in that mapping. Now down here, you can see that you can get quite granular with all of the specific line items in ADP payroll. For example, if there's insurance, if there's loans, if there's child support, and there's also, of course, all of the different Social Securities and Medicare and other taxes. If you do not need this level of granularity, you can see that I have mapped to clearing accounts and payroll liability accounts because I don't need that much granularity in QuickBooks Online. Now, in this particular client's case, I did not use the department mapping. Rather, I used the employee mapping. Specifically, even though we have set up ADP with two different, two different departments, in QBO, we actually wanted three different P&L areas. So what's happening is that we have a field employees, office employees, and officer employees. So because I wanted this level of granularity, I am syncing and I am using the employee level. This was not a difficult client to do this with. They had about 25 employees and there were really only two officers and four or five, four or five office employees that I had to go in and customize specifically. A couple of notes, after you have set this up, it's for the most part set and forget, unless of course you have new employees, in which case you have to add the employee to QBO and you have to go back and update the mapping here in ADP. There are a couple of settings that you're given. One, do you want to push in just a company summary, which is very, very broad, or at the employee level? I wanted the employee level because I wanted that granularity on the P&L to differentiate between officer, office, and field employees. Also, our list is first name, last name, and finally, while you can automatically have ADP push these journal entries to QBO, I have opted to go manual just so I can have a little bit of control over the process. Once the setup is complete, you won't need to go back there, but you will need to come into the general ledger transactions section. Here is a list of all of the payrolls, and you can see that in the past I have posted them. And today we are going to post over these five payrolls. Now, it, manually, it is a relatively simple task by just going into actions and send to your accounting software. Actions, send to accounting software. Again, this could be automated. However, I have opted to keep this manual. What's going to happen over in QBO is we're going to get a new activity. Now, currently, you'll notice that I have a bunch of ADP transactions, ADP wages, 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 and taxes. 
and none of these are matched. Now I do have rules set up so that if I don't do the manual transactions, they will post to a clearing account, but I actually am going to prefer that they match. So I'm going to come back and we're going to continue to push these transactions in. So you can see this was done and all this is happening in real time. It usually takes 30 to maybe 90 seconds or so. Okay, through the power of editing, all of those transactions have posted. And now we will return to our QBO view and we will see that our rules uh, now have matches next to them. So what we have specifically just done is we've pushed in journal entries that match the cash that came in from our bank feeds. This is the preferred method. I prefer matches. So what we're going to do is we're going to accept these transactions. Match, match. Okay, so those are all accepted. And you'll also notice that I have another issue here. I've got some EDP wage garnishments. That's another one of those special situations you want to be aware of. When you're setting up the mapping, you want to be sure that they're pointed to the payroll liabilities. And then, of course, I have a rule that's set up that when it sees that there's a garnishment, it also maps to that same, uh, it maps to that same place. So I can accept all these with relative confidence that they're going to the right place. Here's another transaction you'll get from ADP, which is their fees. That is also something that I have a rule set up that when it sees ADP fees, it's just gonna automatically categorize that to legal and professional fees. And so that's uh, kind of set it and forget it. Now what's interesting is that we do have one more ADP tax transaction that did not match. What we will have to do is figure out why that what happened there. So now we're going to troubleshoot this process. And what the way I also gain comfort that everything has posted accurately is I like to reconcile the data. So there were two accounts in there, AKA clearing accounts. One of them was payroll clearing and one of them was payroll liabilities. Now the payroll liability account is where all of the payroll taxes that are the employee share are held, but this is the payroll clearing account. And because we are pushing in employee level data, there are lots and lots of journal entries. ADP will push a journal entry for every employee, and then it will post a summary journal entry that will reduce the payroll clearing and match to the cash that comes out. So in a perfect world, when I select everything, all 118 from those five transactions that we saw, we should have charges and payments that equal, and this clearing account goes back to zero. All right, I'm gonna just zoom in very quickly, and we can see exactly what, I, what, what I'm showing you. This is a charge. This is ADP's journal entry that, is specific to this individual employee. And then on the payment side, DDP also pushes a very large journal entry that will relieve the payroll clearing that will match to cash. Okay, so now let's look at the other clearing account, which is payroll liabilities. I'll just hit finish now. Everything is done. We'll go back to reconcile, payroll liabilities. Like all clearing accounts, it should reconcile to zero. We'll use today's date and we'll start reconciling. Now, this one might be a little bit more challenging because we had that other payroll difference. So we do have a difference. Let's see what that is. Okay, through the magic of editing, I have found our difference. Specifically, when ADP impounds the taxes, these transactions came from the bank feed and were coded to an expense account. They should have been mapped to the payroll liability account. And I went and remapped each of the last five. That was just something that the client may have categorized. And if we recall, going back to our bank transaction, we had this one right here that was not matched. So I'm gonna go ahead and add that now to payroll liabilities. That way, when I come back, hit refresh, 
our difference in the payroll liability section should go all the way to zero. And ta-da. So now we have accurate reconciled accounts and all of our payroll is accounted for. Now that brings up a, an important note on the actual journal entries that are being pushed over by ADP. So what we have is we have two sets of journal entries here. On the left, I'm going to say this is, I don't want to use the word old school, but traditional or maybe the manual way of doing it and the way um, I've seen a lot of clients do it that don't have a lot of granularity and that don't take advantage of this kind of uh, power that ADP is giving us. Specifically, you'll have a debit to pay, payroll expense, and that's the gross amount. And then you'll reduce that gross amount by the payroll liabilities. And then this is the cash that comes that ADP comes in and takes via the wage pay. So ADP usually comes in and they grab cash in three different instances. One is their fee, which we talked about, that's easy. Next, they come in, take the net wages, and then they come in and they take the payroll taxes. Even if they're all within five, 10 minutes of each other at midnight, because they're all direct deposit, that's how you, they usually do it. And in this instance, we have two entries, both tied to cash. One is uh, the wages, net, and one is the taxes. And that one has the employer taxes, then you reverse the payroll liabilities that are the employees, and then you get that cash amount. Now, if you're using the sync method from ADP, especially if you're doing it by employee, you're going to need three journal entries. The first journal entry is automated by ADP as well as the second. But the first one is going to be an employee level, and it's going to say, it's going to have the employee's gross pay. Then it's going to debit your employee taxes account. And then it's going to credit the liabilities for the employee's taxes. And here it's going to credit your payroll clearing account, that clearing account that we, we, we looked at. Then it's also going to post that clearing to cash journal entry, that big journal entry where all of the uh, employees are kind of reversed out of clearing. And then there's that one line item that, that ADP goes in and takes the cash. That's what this transaction is, or this journal entry is down here. Then the third journal entry takes place in the bank feed via a rule, which is what I did not have set up correctly, which is why I had to correct it. And that is the payroll liabilities, and that just comes from cash and that gets mapped to this account. So I hope that helps clear things up because it is a little bit of a, uh, a nuanced difference between what many accountants are used to with the two journal entries in the what I call the netting of uh, employee taxes and the net wages and the way that ADP is pushing over, which is an individual transaction, which is a journal entry for each of them. So to recap, we have, you want to make sure your mapped accounts are done correctly. You want to use match to bank feeds whenever possible, especially with the wages. You want to reconcile both the clearing account and the payroll account. And then if I had one thing to add, it would be to populate the memos. When I say populate memos, here's what I mean. This is the journal entry that ADP pushes in by employee. It's mapped to the prop, proper P&L, taxes. In this instance, there's some tips. Um, but there's nothing here in the description. I would love to see some uh, ability to enter in maybe some uh, expressions that have the date, that have the reiterate the employee in some more detail and more commentary in the description. Maybe pay period, that would be nice as well. Uh, and maybe even having an attachment of the pay stub. That would be super powerful if I could improve upon this tool in, in any way. Hope this was helpful and thank you for watching. Bye.